Send not to know for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. It's Canvey Island, it's springtime, it's 2014. My life is coming to an end. It's been the most extraordinary year. Welcome to Kermit Uncut. There's a new film out in UK cinemas this week called The Ecstasy of Wilco Johnson. It's directed by Julian Temple and it tells the story of Wilco Johnson who a few years ago was given a diagnosis that he had terminal cancer. There was nothing he could do about it and couldn't be treated. And he was incredibly sanguine about this, facing up to death, realising that somehow the knowledge of imminent death made him utterly appreciate life. And then something extraordinary happened. He was told that actually the cancer was operable. In fact, he had an operation and he is now fighting fit. And I went to the premiere of the film after which Wilco Johnson played a gig, a blinding gig, I have to say. I'm mean, a big fan of Dr. Field. It was terrific to be there in the 100 Club watching Wilco Johnson play really, really top of his game. And after the film, there was a Q&A with Wilco Johnson and Julian Temple. And obviously, many of the questions were to Wilco Johnson. It was a kind of fan crowd. People love him. They love the film. They love his music. And they wanted to hear his story. And I just wanted to say a little bit about Julian Temple. See, from a film critic's point of view, I'm increasingly thinking that Julian Temple really is some kind of genius. He's had a very strange career. He first came to public attention with the great rock and roll swindle, which was this very, very compromised version of the Sex Pistols story seen from the point of view of their manager, Malcolm McLaren, after the band had broken up. Years later, he went back to that subject and made The Filth and the Fury, which was a terrific rock documentary, which really gave us the story from the side of the band. In terms of his feature films, it's been an up and down career. He made Absolute Beginners, which was not well received by critics and was something of a financial failure, after which he made Earth Girls Are Easy, which now has some kind of cult status, but again, wasn't a really big hit. I remember being at Radio 1 when he came in to talk about his feature film Vigo, Passion for Life, which I rather liked, a film about Jean Vigo, but again, wasn't well received by critics. But things really kicked off for Temple after he made a documentary about Glastonbury and then a documentary about Joe Strummer, The Future is Unwritten. And suddenly he emerged as one of the most exciting forces in documentary filmmaking, particularly when it came to musical documentary filmmaking. He went on to make Oil City Confidential. That was a film that we showed at the Shetland Film Festival alongside another of Julian Temple's documentaries, Requiem for Detroit. Those two were really big hit movies when we played them in the cinema in Shetland. People loved them. They loved the passion. They loved the energy. They loved the inventiveness. They loved the way that when it came to Oil City Confidential, the story of Dr. Feelgood, Julian Temple was using his knowledge of film and popular culture to tell a story about this extraordinary explosion of British rock music. Now, to some extent, The Ecstasy of Wilco Johnson is a companion piece to Oil City Confidential, but in other ways, they're very different. Oil City Confidential was about the birth of a particular form of British rock music, the Thames Delta Blues, as it gets called. The Ecstasy of Wilco Johnson is really much more about life and death of what it means to be alive and what it means to be facing the spectre of death. It is an oddly profound film. It's extraordinary that over the course of a couple of decades, Julian Temple has gone from being somebody who, I have to say, initially I thought was a bit of a chancer, to somebody I now consider to be one of the best filmmakers working in Britain. Go and see The Ecstasy of Wilco Johnson. Its subject is a remarkable human being, but so is the filmmaker. Well, there it is. I'm not dead. I'm actually on my roof with my telescope and my guitar and a few more years. And uh, what more could you ask?